Ready? Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the October 2019 meeting of the West Sacramento Area Flood Control Association Agency. Uh, would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, first item on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. I move that we approve the agenda. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, item two, election of the Wasafka Interim General Manager slash Secretary. Um, does anyone wish to present that or we just can look at the memo that was uh, presented? Um, uh, I'll make a comment at the last meeting. Um, it just came up at the, at the last, so I asked that we put it back on the agenda for, for, for this month. Um, and having um, read the uh, analysis here, it makes sense to continue uh, Greg Fabin as the uh, interim general manager, uh, and we'll revisit this uh, at the first of the year and see where we go from there. So I would... Uh, um, whether it takes a motion or not, but I would make a motion that we appoint Greg uh, Fabin as an interim general manager through um, the end of the year. Mr. Or, Mr. Uh, Ramos? Yes. I, I think rather than interim general manager, you're talking about appointing him as general manager through 2019. Yeah, that was in the office. Take, take the interim yeah. off the title. Okay. Thank you. That's that's fine. Um, may, may I ask Mr. Chairman? Yeah, yeah just... Um, the um, appointment through uh, the end of the calendar year, if um, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to understand if that's if, if we just make it maybe for a six month period. Well, I, I think I think what we're we're talking about is come January when we uh, appoint new officers of the board and whatnot. We could we would at that point. I said through that through that time till our January board meeting. How's that sound? Yeah, I think um, the board typically in the first of the calendar year will take up appointments both internally as chair, vice chair, as well as appointment of um, general manager and secretary. secretary. So the idea was just to get through the end of the calendar year, pick it up under normal course of business in January. And that's normal. I'm sorry, I'm just unfamiliar with yeah. that. Yeah, that's yeah. normal course of business is to have a general manager. I'm just try trying to make it sure that the the, in the continuity but is there. Well, I think, I think we'll continue through until uh, yeah, and when we'll calendar it again in January to make the appointment for the full calendar year. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, then uh, I will make that mo motion to appoint Greg Fabin as uh, uh, general manager and secretary of the board through uh, through a January uh, reappointment. I'll second that. For first to second, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Carry carry forward. Uh, public comment on matters not on the agenda. We do have uh, one person wishing to speak here. Uh, Kaziz Shukas. I said it correctly, but uh, with Rifa on the river. cover sheet I handed out, Riva is displayed there right next to the river. That's the first development you see as you go down the sheet right there. So we're right against the uh, river at that point. Uh, my reason for me coming here today is, uh, first of all, being the president of the board there, I have the responsibility for the community to make sure that everything seems to be working okay. And a couple of weeks ago, I happened to walk around the property in the back towards the levee, and there was an interesting uh, water coming from a certain area. And I made that observation, gave a call to uh, Paul Dirksen, who uh, came out nicely with, and brought Tim Allen out with him. And we observed that, uh, I looked at where the water was, but I also noticed that there was this flourishing blackberries that ran right up to the side of the levy and not just from where the street was where we were but about 50 yards towards the levy 
And after investigation, I found out in my landscaper that the water was coming out from our last sprinkler right there at the end by the, uh, by the street. But that didn't account for this huge mass of flourishing blackberries that were going right against the levee. Uh, it was decided at the time that Paul said that Sam Cooney was going to come out and get rid of those blackberries and do an investigation. Uh, in his words, he was going to take a look at maybe there's a well that wasn't capped that could possibly be causing these blackberries to flourish the way they were. Well, Sam came out, did his job, but unfortunately Paul decided not to go out and do any more investigations and said that the sprinkler to him was the reason why the problem was. And the sprinkler was just dripping water. Couldn't possibly cause the flourishing of all these blackberries. Well, I, I contacted a number of people, uh, and I was curious to find out where the new Southport Act, uh, I don't know what you call it, reinforcement of the levee started, because it started right in that zone G where we are. And I really couldn't get a straight answer. I got pictures of 10,000 feet level of drawings with magic marker written around it but I couldn't get an exact location because we're right against that starting point. So I was concerned in that regard. But what was a concern was that we didn't do what we were planning to do in finding out exactly after the blackberries were removed what was causing them to flourish. After I talked, uh, I took a, I have a video that I'm gonna send you. I couldn't do it now, but I'll send it to you in your email, you'll see that I walked up near the property looking to maybe identifying where they could have started. And I noticed that right opposite, it's not a levee, it's a perpendicular, Paul calls it a sand pile that runs all along my, pot, my side of my property. Right on the other side of it is a huge blackberry and tree little forest, if you will, that runs adjacent to the property on the other side. To me, it's like, there's an oasis out there. On the other side, it's dry land. On the, other, on the other side, it's all dry. But these two particular spots are flourishing. Trees, blackberries going all the way down. I don't know, you know, how, I'm not an uh, environmental scientist, but it seems odd to me. And the hole that this thing is sitting in, this blackberries, look like they're like, if you stand on that levee, you go straight down about 20 feet. So the concern is to try to conclude what is causing this flourishing of vegetation in that area. And so I'm, one of the reasons I have to sign a flood insurance policy in my HOA this coming week. And I, I can't honestly say when I sign it that I don't know what's going on here because I don't know. I just can't sign, okay, we're okay community with this value of flood. The risk that we are presenting you is this uh, particular risk. One thing I want to highlight is that on page four, it's interesting that in an environmental statement on page four there, they show you a estimated time of one foot inundation depth uh, for Southport area. And that arrow up on the upper left is exactly in my community. And so if you, it's ironic, call it what you want, but it's a representation of how fast Southport's gonna get flooded if that area is uh, flooded out or the levees breached. So in that regard, I'm looking to reason I'm here, I'm gonna just communicate to you, let you know what's going on there. And uh, if you wanna take action, by all means, I'm all for taking more action. But I just can't leave it alone. My agenda is what's going on, how can it be remedied and uh, addressed properly. So I went to the, uh, the Corps of Engineers. They told, I, when I asked them where they, had, where they started the repair, mm -hmm. They told me, write it in, uh, a, what is it called, a, a disclosure uh, statement. Let's see, Tim, Tim 
Lee, I believe that's his name, he stated, well, you're going to have to do a uh, disclosure statement, if you want, a Freedom of Information Act, okay. to get that information. And to me, that's a little BS. You know, this is a public thing, and he's sending me on that road. So anyway, that's the frustration I'm feeling, and I'm looking forward to get somebody to address that particular issue. And well, sir, okay, can I can I step in? Sure, by um, all means. That's I, I think you'll I think you'll find that uh, you know we'll 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 respond to what you're you're, you're doing, mm -hmm. and hopefully get you comfortable with uh, what's out there. That, those levees were completely built, both the Corps of Engineers and our project tied in completely. What you're, what you're describing there is probably outside of the levy itself, but you know it should be investigated. We have several organizations, the Reclamation District and others, that do monitor and maintain those levees, and uh, they will take a look at that for you. And uh, let's get to the bottom of it so you and the rest of the, your homeowners are comfortable with it. Just to comment on this one thing we're about you know, the uh, map and where it is, that was kind of, uh, there was many of these put together of different levee oh, breaks and stuff. And so you're just, you're just seeing one example of how the water flows if something happened there. But to answer that, you know, you are next to the newest and strongest levees in West Sacramento. So let's make sure that continues to be the case and hopefully you'll be comfortable. Well, I, I see that, but it, I think it started right where we are. And the question is, is this what I'm observing, this oasis? Is it some place, you know, further down? You have these trees, the enormous trees that have root systems. These things are right against the levee, and knowing where that improvement started and went down all the way down the river, is a key factor in knowing, you know, is Understood. this really seeping through? Understood. Okay. They'll, they'll, they'll explain how it was all tied in and, and sure. that there's continuity there. And uh, we'll, we'll find out why the, why the berries are growing so good. Mr. So, Chair, and the trees. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, what can I expect of response? I mean, a week, 10 days? Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Chair, I mean, yes. if, if it's okay with the gentleman, we could speak directly after the meeting, and I think I can provide some additional information that may help alleviate some of your concerns. Well, I'm, I'm more for more information, okay. but I still like to make sure that the committee, you know, takes care of what they believe to be the proper way to address the situation. Okay. I mean, I'll talk to anybody. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. But uh, it was good that he was able to make his comments. So um, item four, approval of the September 19th, uh, 2019 meetings and minutes. I move that we uh, approve. Uh, and I will, I will second it. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 None here, no opposed. Motion carries. Um, item five, report out of closed session. Uh, the board did meet in closed session to confer with legal counsel regarding anticipated litigation related to the ACOM change request. And in closed session, the board approved uh, expected additional consultant expenses and also approved proceeding with mediation with ACOM utilizing Ken Gibbs, who is associated with JAMS. Thank you. Um, item six, review of monthly and year-to-date revenue and expenses. Good morning, Jen. members of the board. Right here. Okay. I will be reporting out on the revenue and expenses for the month of August 2019. And so you see on your desk, I do have a memo for the board members. Um, in the original packet, the financial cash flow did not include the month of August for Fund 871, so the revised attachment shows that. And so I'll be reporting on Fund 870, the beginning balance was approximately $7.4 million. Revenue was 239000 Expenses were $1.7 million, and that was, that was mainly from the debt services. And the ending cash position for Fund 870 was approximately $5.9 million. The starting balance for Fund 871 was 259000 There wasn't that much activity for this month. There was no revenue, and expenses were only 63000 The ending cash position for 871 was 197000 Looking at the year-to-date position with the combined cash position of all three funds, it was approximately $14.2 million. As of October 10th, the agency's combined cash position was approximately $11.8 
Finance closed the fiscal year 1819 books. The agency received approximately two million in retention from closeout of the North Area EIP construction. The amount was moved from fund 257 to 871. And the statement of cost for quarter 32, which is from April to June 2019, for about 3.4 million, is in review. Once approved, this amount will be moved from fund 257 to 871 as well. With the offset restoration project, drainage project, and federal project fully designed underway, staff expects to accrue additional advanced funding to the agency, and we'll be discussing the, new, uh, the next funding advance with DWR in the near future. That concludes my report. Do you have any questions for me? Questions? Did, did I hear right? You closed out the North Area project? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, hello. It's a um, mixed bag. <laughs> yeah, they, they did uh, release construction retention on the projects. Um, we still have some antiquated title issues to clear out on the real estate project, and we're working forward on those right now. Um, I would guess right now they're pretty much set up the resolution of those title issues, but it'll probably take until the middle of next year for them to work through um, the courts and get them cleared out. Okay. Well, that's progress. It's progress. It's, progress. it's progress. definitely progress. Thank you very much. Any, any questions? No questions? Okay. Thank you. Um, on to our regular agenda. Um, item 7, consideration of resolution 1910-1 uh, um, to uh, refund uh, revenue bonds. Is, uh, do we have a presentation or is We do, we Mr. Kandeker will uh, okay. provide the presentation on this item. I think Jen's gonna bring it up here. My name is Ken Deeker. I'm the Municipal Advisor to the City of West Sacramento and I've worked on two previous uh, bond issues for the agency. Um, wanted to bring to your attention, uh, I know you were briefed very briefly at the last board meeting. It was kind of a last minute thing driven by market conditions. Uh, wanted to give you a little bit more detail on the briefing and, and give you an idea of this opportunity. Uh-oh. There we go, sorry. All right, in June 2011, uh, Wasafka issued assessment revenue bonds in the amount of 13.36 million. The proceeds of the bonds financed various capital improvements related to levy and flood control, funded a debt service reserve fund for the bonds and paid the cost of issuing the bonds. The 2011 bonds are callable on September 1 of 2021 at par, so there's no prepayment penalty at that time. And interest rates on the current bonds range from five to five and a quarter percent. I wanted to give you a, a couple of definitional things because the, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 sort of changed the landscape in the municipal market. First of all, an advance refunding is the ability to call bonds in advance of their call date. So for example, you could issue tax exempt bonds today, create an escrow account that would pay the prior bonds through and including the call date, and those are defeased and off the books of the agency. However, and a current refunding is the ability to issue bonds within 90 days of their call date. Unfortunately, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 eliminated advance refundings. It's been kind of a two-edged sword. Um, first of all, that means that we could not refund these bonds on a tax-exempt basis and not close until June 1st of 2021 or 90 days prior to the September 21 call date on the bonds. Um, however, these bonds can be advance refunded on a taxable basis. And this is partly being driven by the fact that the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act eliminated uh, advance refundings, which took out a, a large volume of, mar of bonds in the municipal market. In addition, because of the threat of recession and all the trade issues going on, taxable interest rates in the Treasury market have come down substantially. The 10-year Treasury was at a 150 uh, just a couple, three weeks ago. It went up to like 170, back down to a 163. So we are, we are currently in a very low interest rate environment on a taxable basis. Um, so basically, the ability to refund these today on a tax exempt basis is not there because of the act. However, we can do these on a taxable advance refunding basis. The current plan before you is to not refund the 2020 and 2021 maturities of the prior bonds because they are non-callable. And by definition, non-callable bonds cannot provide savings to a refinancing. So we're only going to refinance the bonds from 2022 through 2041. The other two bonds that are not being refunded, those two small maturities will continue to be paid as normal and interest and principal will be paid from the assessments and simply take advantage of the market conditions to refund these on a tax taxable basis. The net result of all of this, again, there was about 13.3 million. The current amount outstanding, excluding 
the 2020 and 21 maturities, which would not be part of this refunding, um, is 10.8 million. We would plan to issue about 11.8 million dollars of refunding bonds. The total savings are almost 2.3 million dollars, or on average about 108 thousand dollars a year. Now, on the grand scheme of $5 million a year that the agency collects in these assessments, it's not a huge amount, but over time, that allows additional monies to flow in for capital projects or operational costs and those things that are paid from the assessments. The net present value savings is a little over a million and a half dollars, or 14.5% net present value savings. Again, this is based on market interest rates as of September 23rd. Um, again, um, CDAC recommends net present value savings on refundings, or excuse me, G GFOA, the Government Finance Officer Association, recommends advanced refundings with three to 5% net present value savings. This far exceeds that at 14.5% under current market conditions. I wanted to show the board uh, the savings schedule. I know it's a little bit blurry. We are not extending the term of the bonds. We're simply leaving the term of the bonds the same and simply taking advantage of the market conditions. And you can see there that except for the small amount in 2020, because those dollars are already on the tax roll, um, the rest of the savings are averaging about $108,000 per year. So we're not extending the term, generating savings every year. And again, it's not a huge transaction, but it does generate fairly significant dollars that can be used for operational things within the agency budget. So like I said, current market conditions are very much in favor of this. Now, I, I will point out to the board uh, that you could decide to wait until June of 2021 to refund these bonds on a tax-exempt basis, uh, but that is a market question. You don't know what's going to happen with interest rates between now and then. You have the bird in hand now where you've got an incredibly low interest rate environment for taxables and tax-exempt municipals. Um, there is an awful lot of these taxable advanced refundings coming to market as we speak. Buyers generally, um, the larger mutual funds have taxable components to their funds. Uh, insurance companies are huge buyers of these taxable bonds. So there's a big market for taxable debt. In particular, on the corporate side, a lot of them are moving into the municipal side as well. The plan would be to, if you approve this today, would be to bring the financing team on board, which is part of the resolution. Uh, Chronic, Moskowitz, Tiedemann, and Gerard would act as bond counsel. Jones Hall would be Disclosure Council, the underwriter would be Piper Jaffray, and my firm would serve as Municipal Advisor. And it's the same team that's worked on the last couple of transactions for the agency. We would like to begin preparation of the required documents. You're not approving the transaction day, you're simply approving the financing team and asking to bring this back to the board at the November 21st meeting uh, with the full documentation. So that would be an official statement and all the legal documents. Uh, and certainly we will update the numbers to the board at that time because obviously this municipal market is changing daily and so we'd like to brief the board again on November 21st as to where the savings stand at that time. If the market, if the board approves this at the next meeting and the market were to move away, we are intending to move pretty quickly. Uh, these are market conditions that may or may not last. Uh, if the board approves it at November 21st, the plan would be to sell the bonds on December 11th and close the bonds on January 8th. So it's a really quick time frame to do that. Um, the cost of issuance are estimated about $200,000 for the fixed cost. That includes the budget for all the professionals that are in your packet today. Um, in addition, a rating agency fee. I will tell you that uh, in September of 2018, S&P raised the rating on these bonds from A to AA minus. So it's an incredible rating. And Fitch, which is the other rating agency that rates these bonds, moved them from AA minus to AAA, which is the gilded AAA rating. You've got 16,500 parcels, primarily residential, a small assessment. That's what makes this credit so diversified and so strong because it covers the entire area of West Sacramento and all of the residential and commercial properties within the district or agency uh, borders. So anyway, staff recommends that you approve this engagement of the financing team and bring the proposed documents back for the November 21st meeting. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions the board may have. Okay, thank you. Questions? Chris? Uh, no questions. Just, just thanks for the briefing and, and certainly the um, emphasis that the term will not be extended on this. And it's an important thing for the agency. So thank you. And I would like to point out one other thing that I, that I left out of the proposal um, or the presentation. The new interest rates, so right now the interest rates range from five and a five and a quarter percent. The new interest rates currently are expected to be between two and 3.39 percent on a taxable basis. So you can see that there's a huge interest rate savings there based on current market. Um, 
we go ahead and, and do this uh, refunding at this, this point, what could be our options down the road uh, with these taxable bonds? Is, it, is there still restrictions as far as uh, calling them and refunding? They would have, they would most likely have a 10-year call protection period like most municipal bonds do. So you would have a 10-year Paul crawl. So if you were to, to do the transaction in 2019, by 2029, you would have another opportunity to come back and refund these because they're taxable. And you could do taxable advance refundings. Nothing says you can't come back and do another taxable advance refunding should market interest rates, you know, continue to decline depending on recession and all the other things that are sort of hovering out there in the macroeconomic world. Okay. Um, so it does not limit you from doing another advance refunding, but what we're trying to do is to take advantage of today's current conditions. Okay. Um, and I think the final question, um, and someone can answer the, uh, if we go forward with this and then market conditions change and we, we don't go forward, um, how much of that $200,000 budget or whatever would we have spent? I imagine some of this is the actual issuance costs, right? Right, and so yeah. all of the fees of the professionals involved in the offering are contingent upon successful closing. The one fee that is not is the fee of the rating agency. So once we pull the trigger to have S&P come in and rate these bonds and or Fitch, uh, to come in and rate these bonds, that is a non-refundable fee once they do their work to rate the bonds. And so, but that happens, you know, relatively quickly. After the 21st meeting, uh, we would expect to have the rating presentation shortly thereafter and move to market as quickly as we could. So there wouldn't be a lot of exposure as far as the cost of that one fee. That's okay. about $15,000 approximately. Okay. okay. So the rest of the fees are all contingent upon successful sale and closing. Okay. Um, any other questions? Makes sense. Let's do that. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Um, Good morning. Um, so based off of Ken's presentation and what Roberta presented briefly at the last meeting, um, staff is recommending, uh, well, we have a few different alternatives. Ideally, we would like alternative one, which is approving the recommendation today as is with res resolution 19-1001. Alternatively, um, you c we can come back if you would like changes within the team that was specified today and in the resolution. Or option three, um, we can delay the bond um, uh, issuance until a later date. Okay. Any comments on that? No. Well, um, I would say, uh, you know, based on the conditions and where we're at now, I think it's, it's prudent to go forward and uh, uh, get the process started and we'll see where we are in a month. Yeah. Uh, with that, I agree, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'll uh, move the recommended action on alternative one. As yeah. And uh, I will second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve resolution 191001 as presented. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, item eight, the Wasafeka project updates. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Chair. Members of the board, um, I'm gonna go over some of the items from your uh, monthly report that um, just to highlight. For the Southport Levy project, um, the phase one um, construction, as you know, is complete. However, there still remains uh, the borrow restoration, <clears throat> as well as some, some minor drainage improvements. Um, the borrow restore work, the um, HDR continues to finalize the plans and specifications. We've issued a draft supplemental EIR uh, to be able to use um, material from the ECO water project. Uh, for bar restore, it is currently out for 45-day public review period, and uh, comments are due November 6th. To date, we've all, we've received one comment on the draft. Uh, public meeting was held on October 8th, uh, not very well attended by the public, um, and consequently, no comments were received there. We do anticipate bringing them to the board um, to certify the EIR at the regular November meeting. Um, and that will allow us to be able to move forward with the work in the spring and summer of next year. Uh, the drainage improvements, the, as the board is aware, our, um, contract was awarded to TNS Construction at the last board meeting. Um, they, the contractor is currently putting together submittals and they plan to mobilize and bring in work uh, next week, starting October 21. And we hope to complete uh, the major work um, by early December in advance of any significant rainfall. 
Um, also related to the levy work, the Board of Senior Consultants is scheduled now to come out the week of December 9 to do their final post-construction safety assurance review. Um, so we're working, staff is working um, on those logistics now um, with both um, the Board of Senior Consultants as well as our uh, design and construction team to get all the materials together uh, for that visit. And then lastly, with related to the levy project, Sky High Perspectives, our aerial photography and videography firm, completed their last round of um, photos for the project, and those can be um, viewed at the site listed in your report. Um, they're also putting together a final version of the, the time-lapse video um, that staff is expecting early December. Um, we're eagerly anticipating that delivery so we can take a look at that, um, and then obviously share that with the board as well. Well, I guess not lastly. Then, then lastly, uh, ISI certification, uh, just an update as the, the board should be aware that we had submitted um, the project to the Institute for Sustainable Infrastructure. Um, the, it's currently there for review. We're anticipating um, them to complete the review uh, and issue, an ish, issue their tentative findings and give us our feedback on their review of our, our package. We're anticipating that at the end of October. Um, but estimates by our consulting firm that helped us put together the packages that uh, they anticipate uh, platinum on the low end and platinum rating on the high end. So it's a, it's a nice bracket of platinum. Anyways, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we're eagerly anticipating um, that feedback from ISI. Where do you put the plaque? <laughs> <laughs> Side of the levee, maybe? Yeah, somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so then that brings us to phase... Um, Three, the Southport restoration um, project, and I'm going to turn it over to Paul Dirksen now to give the board a brief update on that work. And there's also a um, PowerPoint presentation with some pictures. Good morning, uh, Chairman and members of the board. Uh, before I go into this, so one other thing, we had our, one of our, um, our annual large media events at uh, Bridgeway Island Lakes Elementary School this week. Um, Tom was there. He uh, presented along with uh, Councilwoman Sandine to a, a group of youngsters who walked away with backpacks with different things about flood preparedness, and they played the game. And um, it was really well attended by media. Um, so there were like four different media outlets there. Um, we were also represented by um, our, our partners, the Department of Water Resources and the Army Corps of Engineers. So overall, a really great event. Um, one of the first ones to happen in the entire state, from what I understand. So. Good event. Okay, so in terms of floodplain restoration, not a whole lot has been happening recently, and that's principally because, come on. Uh, we're still waiting on fish screens. But, um, so what we're doing, so this is one of the uh, low flow channels that got cleared out this past, um, this past, uh, this past month. Um, so we're just preparing for the planting that's going to come, as well as the irrigation. Um, the balance of the plant delivery coming from our um, nursery in Chico is supposed to show up next week. Um, the pump screens, from what I understand, are going, they're just, they're just trying to finish them up. They're supposed to be delivered again next week. Uh, once that happens, they'll have to do, uh, they'll do installation and a system test. Uh, once the system test is done, they'll be staking the plant locations. Again, just for your recollection, there's about 80,000 different plants going in, about 36,000 in the north and, and 50,000 in the south. Um, so, uh, but what we have right now, it's all being taken care of. Um, here you can see the low flow channel has been cleared out. Uh, maybe a little bit hard to see if you haven't been out there. Uh, you also see the uh, the large woody material in place, so, you know, for when the uh, the inundation does occur this year. And um, as you know, so if you see on the right hand side of this picture, you'll see a little rill along the remnant levee there. We had the same thing occur along one of our um, cultural sensitive sites. Um, there was some slope flattening that was done uh, there to try to correct that. Uh, we're working right now with the contractor to, to put in to do some rock placement to correct. Or, or to um, to armor one side, which also seen the, saw a lot of erosion, where we also had some um, some um, some recovered um, items. So we are working on work fixing that this next month. 
Again, you can see the long arterial irrigation lines. There's drip lines spread throughout there. If you walk out there, you'd see black lines snaking all over the place that follow the furrows that they already built the previous month. And come on. Um, so right now, if you don't know it, um, the river level is at one of its lowest points um, that we've had all season. And so they're going to remove these barriers that have been keeping the low flow channels um, from inundating fully. Um, that's my understanding is that that has already occurred. I just haven't been out this week to take a photo and bring you, uh, bring you an up-to-date photo. But my understanding is that until the rivers rise, that right now the, the water is not coming into the inlets, that will allow for the planting of the, uh, the emergent marsh that's been um, planned in our design. And this is ongoing, plant care and maintenance. And thank you. So this is what's happening. Um, again, we're going to install fish screens in the river, connect the pumps um, and the river, uh, the fish screens are all supposed to occur. Uh, that delivery is supposed to occur either the latter part of this week or um, next week. Um, everything we need to get planted. And then the contractor assures me that as irrigation is going in, the planting is going to be happening concurrently. Um, and we are working to have this all complete sometime in early November. Um, as you know, the flood season begins November 1st, so we have reached out to the Central Valley Flood Protection Board to let them know that we may be running into the first week um, to see if there's any issues with that. Any questions? No, <clears throat> no that's a lot of plants. That's a lot. <laughs> okay, thank you. Anything else, Greg? Yeah, the federal project. Okay, go for it. <laughs> All right, so um, as the board is aware, we've begun, we've awarded the design contract to MGE, and we are, uh, we have started design on, on the first increment of the federal project along the Yola Bypass Levy. Um, staff continues to meet bi-weekly with the project delivery team, which includes the Army Corps of Engineers, um, the Department of Water Resources, as well as with SAFCA staff. Um, the design team is putting together a comprehensive drilling plan um, that will be submitted to the Corps uh, for their approval. Uh, that comprehensive drilling plan will feed the 65 or 90 percent design deliverable. Um, there, a small subset of drilling um, in advance of that. Um, we received approval from the Corps um, to, to do that ahead of time. We're just going through the process of getting um, some of the environmental clearances. Um, we've already received clearance from uh, Fish and Wildlife. Uh, now the uh, Corps is running a categorical exemption internally. Uh, once we receive that exemption, we'll be able to move out with roughly 9 to 12 uh, borings that will help feed the 35 or 60 percent design milestone. Um, as a reminder, we're only under contract with our design firm to design up to the 65 percent design milestone at this time. And that's dependent on a variety of things. One, I think, how well the team does in working with the Corps to deliver their project, um, but also core funding. And I'll talk about funding um, sh shortly. Staff's also working on developing a request for proposal um, from uh, the agency's on-call list for environmental services that can support uh, the design, um, including uh, the needed uh, environmental coverage as we look at doing a supplemental EIS, EIR, um, as appropriate when, when the design um, starts to uh, develop and we understand what the impacts are going to be and how they may or may not deviate from the, the current programmatic environmental uh, document. So which brings me to um, core budgeting. I think the board is aware, if not, here we go. Uh, the House has an appropriations bill for en energy and water that's been completed. Uh, Senate still has to uh, finalize their energy and water bill. Uh, my understanding is there's some dis uh, discussions going on that may or may not be solved before the end of the continuing resolution, which is November 21st, relative to what the final dollar amounts are going to be for these appropriations bill for energy and water. Um, we're hopeful that that can get reconciled and they can move to committee and get a final bill before the end of the resolution. Um, if not, then it's just going to be extended through the year. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, both versions of the bill contain the president's recommendation for another $400,000 in, in design funding for the Corps. Um, and both versions of the bill, as currently written, contain 
significant additional funds for the core that would then be programmed in their work plan for um, additional investigation and design money as well as construction money. Um, my latest intelligence, um, well, we back up. The core district submitted last week to division their work plan request. Uh, division submitted this week to headquarters um, that work plan with their additional recommendations. I have pretty good intelligence that two requests were made on behalf of the agency. One is for the balance of pre-construction engineering and design funds as listed in your report for um, the request is for 3.2, which would be in addition to the 400K that currently is in the bill. Um, so that would make the total balance of PED of 3.6 million. And that there may be an additional line item requesting new start construction under the uh, construction account for the 18.9 million. Um, to further that effort, um, we've been working with our lobbyists, um, both Holland and Knight, as well as Federal Water Consulting, to um, look at scheduling an adv advocacy trip in DC before Thanksgiving um, to see if we can help get both those requests to stick and remain in the work plan. Uh, so when the call comes out after the appropriations bill, uh, we, we hopefully can be in there for a new start construction. It's a very big lift. We are competing with other for a limited number of new starts, at most we're looking at probably two across the nation. Um, and we know of two, one of them being West Sac, looking for one in this district. So um, it is a big lift, but nevertheless, we're gonna give it our best shot and, and see if we can get that project over the finish line. Um, from strictly a schedule perspective, and I would not advocate this way, but from a schedule perspective, whether we get a new start construction in the FY20 work plan or a new start construction in the FY21 work plan, we can still meet our construction schedule of uh, spring of 2021. So we plan to wrap up design end of calendar year in 2020 and then go to construction in spring 2021. Either work plan will get us there, but I'd rather have a bird in the hand. So we're going to do everything we can to try and get over the finish line this year. If not, we're setting the stage for um, new start next year. So uh, that's the plan in a nutshell. Well, big nutshell. Uh, any questions about that? No, I think that's you know we've there's an opportunity there. Yes. So let's uh, let's try to take advantage of it and and see the the 2021 timeline. That's condition that Congress does their thing timely too, so. Yeah, and it's uh, also uh, during an election year yeah. too, so I don't know how it's gonna go down. Yep. All right, that concludes my report. Be happy, 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 happy to answer any other questions the board may have. Anything else? Chris? Thank you. Thank you, Greg, very thorough. Um, item nine, director's comments. Um, I wanna bring up the that um, because of a potential longer um, closed session at our November meeting that uh, we uh, have our regular meeting scheduled for 1030 on that mm -hmm. same day, which would be uh, November 21st. And uh, do we need a motion to do that or just? Uh... I would, okay, well then, then I, would, I would make that motion that we uh, change the time of our normal meeting uh, in November to 10.30 on 11.21. I'll second that motion. The first and second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Hearing no opposed, motion carries. Um, we're adjourned. Thank you all. all right. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you.